is secured for us by our beautiful Savior. And what a beautiful picture that is for us on a day like today when maybe we're thinking a little bit more about heaven, not just because of those readings, but because today is a day that we set apart to remember. To remember a day to remember all of the saints, you know, the people that the light shined through. Do you remember that story I shared with you a few years ago? Little boy was in Sunday school, and the Sunday school teacher asked the kids, who are the saints? And the kids kind of scratched their head a little bit, and then it came to this little boy as he remembered sitting in church and seeing all the stained glass windows. The little boy throws up his hand, and he says, that's easy. The saints are the people that the light shines through. And that's true, isn't it? Those people that God placed in our lives, the people that the light of God's love and presence shined through. Today's a day that we remember, we remember all of those people who, who touched our hearts and our minds, our lives with their love. Those people who now know the reality and the bliss of eternity in all of its beauty. And I'm pretty sure that as you're sitting here right now in these moments, your mind is wandering. Names and faces are flashing before you, just as it is for me as I'm trying to keep my focus. Let me ask you something. How do you picture them right now? Now, maybe me asking that question of you, it's tough. And I get it. It's tough because picturing them takes us back to a time when we had them. It takes us back to a time that we once did have. And as we picture them, we miss them, and understandably. You see, for you and me, as we think about the saints, we also know of grief, right? And grief is real. Grief is something that stings. And I know that you know that well, too. And I once heard it said that grief is the price that we pay for love. And I agree with that. But here's the thing. While grief is real, our grief, our grief is something different. Our grief is a different kind of grief than what maybe others experience. You see, our grief and the heaviness that we perhaps feel today as we remember the people who are no longer with us personally, it's different because our grief isn't without hope. And that makes all of the difference, doesn't it? Hope, but, but not just any kind of hope, a sure hope, a certain hope, a hope that finds its, its roots in Christ Jesus, our Jesus, the perfecter and the author of faith, the one who went head to head and toe to toe with sin, death, and the devil and defeated for you and for me. Our Jesus, the risen one, who gives all the redeemed saints his word and his promises, who gives to us victory and paves the way to life with him forever. In paradise, life beyond the here, life beyond the now, the best of the, the best for them. Life face to face in a mansion that he prepared. You know, one evening, this grandpa was taking a walk with his granddaughter. And it was a beautiful, beautiful night. You know, the kind of light that, that isn't drowned out by city lights. The kind of night where you could look up at the sky and just see the magnificence of every single star. You ever see a night like that? Yeah. Just had a, one of the members from the 830 service took me out to his car and showed me a picture of, of the Milky Way shots. 
by the stone tower, and it's just unbelievable. Well, his grandpa's out there, and, and he's, a, he's a smart guy, you know, so he's looking up, and he's pointing to the stars, and he's saying, he's naming them. And he's, he's drawing his little granddaughter's attention to all the different constellations that are up there. Well, as a granddaughter's seeing all of this, she says a remarkable thing, profound, really. She says, Grandpa, if the bottom of heaven is this beautiful, just think how wonderful the top side of it must be. What peace, what hope. And you know something, my friends? When we begin to rest on that hope, it does something for us. It does something to us. And with new eyes, mindful of heaven's surprise, we can't help but smile for them. You know, I think one of the most remarkable scriptures in, in all of the Bible is that one that Derek read for us. And I'm just going to repeat some of it for you now. Therefore they are before the throne of God and they serve him day and night. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence and never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Now let me ask you again. But this time, this time I want you to close your eyes. Come on, play along. Now I want you to picture them. How do you picture the saints? How do, you, how do you picture the multitude? How do you picture the people that God placed in your life who are home with him now? I hope you picture them as God's word helps us to see them. I hope that you picture them with faith and hope-filled eyes. I hope that you see them more alive than they've ever been. Free. Morning turned to dancing, as the psalmist says it. No more sadness, no more heaviness, no pain. Just glad rejoicing with the whole company of heaven. Picture them now. Picture them. Picture them with Jesus face to face. Picture them when they saw him after a lifetime of joyous anticipation. Picture them as they reached the finish line and God indeed wiped tears from their eyes. Picture them. Picture them at that grandest reunion, the biggest family reunion it ever experienced. You know, today isn't necessarily an easy day. And I think for me this year, it's probably come to realization more so than any other year. But I don't know about you. With a tear in my eye and a tear in my heart even. At the same time, I can't help but smile. And I can't help but wait with joyous anticipation for when I get to see them again. And then, just then, God, too, will wipe every tear from my eye and life will abound forever. Thanks be to God for the saints, for all those people those people who touched our lives, the people that the light shined through. But more than that, thanks be to God for his son, who is the way to life, and who has secured for you and me a place at the table. 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. always pray without ceasing give thanks in all circumstances rejoice always pray without ceasing give thanks in all circumstances this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you for you, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. In addition to those who are printed in the prayers in, the, in your worship bulletin, please say a special word of prayer for the Lynch and Murawski families as they mourn the death of Ellen Lynch this past week. Ellen, if you, it was the wife of uh, a previous member, Don Lynch, who had passed away about three years ago. Um, funeral services for, um, for Ellen will be here tomorrow at 10 a.m. We say a special word of prayer for, for Stacy. Uh, Stacy is the, is the daughter of Don and Ellen Lynch. She's having some significant medical issues, so please keep her in your prayers. For Jeff Schuler, who has some cardiac tests. Uh, for Don Walzak, who has some serious medical issues and is uh, contemplating what treatment uh, she's going she's gonna to take. Andy Krupa, who has some health issues. Rose Mondo, uh, who uh, underwent triple bypass surgery this past week. The Jingaleski family, as they mourn the death of Debbie's dad, Jim. Linda Pluick, uh, who's uh, fighting pneumonia. For Carl Sur's sister-in-law, Tammy, who's fighting COVID. And for Ethan Herbold, uh, who uh, suffered a significant concussion at one of his college football games yesterday. Let us pray for the whole people of God and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the church in heaven and on earth, we rejoice in this holy day, a day of rest and gladness. How desperately we need to hear your word and how important it is for us to break from our day to day to rejuvenate and strengthen our souls for all that is ahead. We faithfully praise you, we praise you for this faith community and the great cloud of witnesses through the years who have now joined the church triumphant. Help us to faithfully carve out time week after week just as they did to be right here. For those who have been away or those who have developed habits that keep them from making the Sabbath about Jesus, open their eyes to see the importance of Christ-centered faith in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of power and love, 
You establish government for the good of your people. We pray that your presence might be a strong presence among those who lead in our communities, in our state, and in our nation. Give all leaders new eyes to see your will as they discern and make decisions. Create new hearts in those who lead that they might be given the Holy Spirit's power, be transformed as fearing, God-fearing leaders. Bless Joe, our president, Kathy, our governor, Mark, our county executive, Kevin, our mayor, and all others. Bless also those serving in the military, especially those from our congregation, William, Travis, and Tyler. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing and strength, we entrust all who long for your healing power to your tender mercy and care. Be with those who are sick, grieving, anxious, lonely, or confused. We pray especially today for the Lynch and Murawski families, the Jingaleski family, for Stacy and Jeff, Dawn and Andy, Rose, Linda, Tammy, and Ethan. We pray for all of those who are printed in our worship bulletins, our friends, our family members, anybody else that we name before you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep us in fellowship with all of your saints, O Lord, and bring us at last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we're going to take just a few moments to remember. So rejoicing in the life promised by Jesus, we recall now in these moments all the saints who have died in the faith, especially those from our congregation who heard the call this past year to join the church triumphant and who now live with the blessed host in heaven above. The thanksgiving in our hearts, we remember John Sietzma, Pam Bloom, Evelyn Camerano, Pam Harla, Ruth Dowd, Tom Sprankle, Ronnie Rich, Cheryl Berger, Elgene Peck, Nancy Bartell, Galen Papura Sr., Marge Kelm, Sandy Tyrone, Marie Carl, John Kozlowski, John Durso, and Ellen Lynch. Lord of hosts, we offer thanks on this All Saints Day for the hosts of saints who now reside with you face to face. We glorify you for granting them the gift of everlasting life. While we miss them and love them still, we know that you are caring for them and loving them in the mansion above far better than we ever could. While we will always be grateful to you for the time that you gave us to share our lives with them, we look forward to the happy reunion with you and all those we love who have gone before us in the faith. Amen. At this time, we're going to join together in singing hymn number 515 that's going to be in the blue book right in front of you.
invite you to please stand for the communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup, And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the blood of of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, gracious Heavenly Father, with this bread and with this cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. Believing in the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may receive our Lord's true body and blood with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Amen. We pray together now, just as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Please have a seat.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forever. Amen. My friends, receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Good morning. Good to be with you. Good to worship with you this morning. I hope that you've been blessed uh, this morning, especially this day and this All Saints Day. Um, as tough as it is, as it draws us to memories, it is uh, certainly a, a celebration. Um, just a, a quick couple of things uh, in regards to the, the symbolism. Obviously, we, um, we opted to uh, put the, the, the pew torches up um, and... Uh, well, there's two reasons for that, I'm not going to lie. One, we just had them re-welded, so I wanted to see how they held up. <laughs> so, looks like they're all standing, so we did good. Um, but no, in all seriousness, the, uh, the other reason for them is on a, on a day like All Saints Day, uh, we're reminded of God's light. Uh, and you know, you, you think about um, darkness, right? And, and even if it's the smallest of flame in darkness, what does that light do? It overpowers. Uh, and God's light and his love can overpower all of the, the things that have us heavy at times. And so uh, we really want light to dominate on a day like today. Now the other thing that I, I want to just point your attention to is um, maybe you wondered why the baptismal font is front and center and covered. Yeah. Uh, and the reason for that, this, believe it or not, is a funeral pall. Uh, and that's what we place over... Um, uh, the urns uh, at, at funerals, and we also have one that goes over the casket. But here's the reason, the symbolism of the funeral, Paul. In holy baptism, Christ covers us with his love, makes us his own, right? Calls us his own, knows us by name, right? And so it's that love that covers us in holy baptism, and we're reminded of, of that, that uh, uh, his presence and, and the safety that we have in, in him. Well, in death, so also does Christ cover us. And that's the reason for the pall that's placed over the casket. In death, Christ covers us once again, as he always has with his love and his presence that carries us home. So that's the symbolism. Um, baptism is, uh, is, you know, I always kind of say that when, when our time comes and, and we're taken to be with God in heaven, that's the culmination of our baptism. Uh, that's, the, that's when the life really really starts happening for us. So, um, you know, I, I, I'll just give you one little illustration real quick. Um, C.S. Lewis, Lewis, and I'm not going to do this justice because I'm going off of my memory, um, but C.S. Lewis, he's a popular all, all, uh, Christian author. He was, a, he was an a, you know, apologetic author, uh, defended the Christian faith. Well, C.S. Lewis once said that, you know, for us, when, when we look at the death of a, a loved one, it seems to be the end. Um, but he says, but for them, it's just the beginning. He, see, he says, you see, in all of life, uh, their life here on earth, that was, that was just the preface and the introduction of the book. But now that they're in eternity, each new day is a chapter. And as each chapter unravels for them, everyone gets better and better and better. I think that's a remarkable picture of the life that we have in eternity with God. So, you know, for us, it's never goodbye. It's always see you later. Uh, their story continues. So may you find hope and peace in, in that certainty this day and, and every day as you remember the saints. All right, uh, a couple announcements for you. As you came in, you, you probably saw that there's a table set up with nomination forms. 
Uh, we're approaching that time of year where uh, we're looking for like the, uh, what was the Marines, Bob, right? We're looking for a few good men and a few good women uh, to help serve in church offices. Uh, so if you, if you know of anybody that might be a good fit for any of the, the offices, um, please just take a moment and, and jot down some names for us. And then as we compile those nominations, we'll send letters out and, and hopefully uh, folks will respond. There's a Veterans Day service that's coming up uh, on November 11th at 1015. Uh, for anybody that uh, is interested in attending that, the Veterans Day service isn't just for our Depew Lancaster vets, it's for anybody. So if you're free and you want to uh, join in on a, on a worship service and uh, a Veterans Day service out on the front lawn, you are more than welcome to be with us on Veterans Day this week at 1015. So the goal is always to have the service in here uh, at 1015 and then we want to make our way out to the lawn by 11 o'clock so the vets can do their, their memorial service. Um, Bob Chapman is uh, once again offered to, uh, to be our uh, preacher, speaker that particular day, uh, and, and I'm sure uh, we'll be blessed as Bob shares a little of, of his story once again. Uh, Sign-up sheet is on the bulletin board for Christmas flowers. The deadline for that is the 14th, so please make sure if you're looking to point, uh, put poinsettias on the, the chancel this, this year for Christmas, uh, uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. Make sure you get your name and let us know how many uh, you want. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the plea out that you know, we get a lot of them because the more that we have, it just looks phenomenal up here at Christmas time. And uh, so we need a lot of them. So no pressure, but sign up. <laughs> All right. Uh, Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving service, that's, uh, that's coming up. Uh, it's going to be on Thanksgiving Eve uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, there's a misprint in, the, in your journal. Uh, it says 7.30. It is not 7.30. It'll be 7 p.m. All right. Uh, for those of you uh, who experienced the death of a loved one this year uh, in the congregation, if the, 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 the person who passed away was a member of the congregation, uh, there is a little gift uh, for you uh, that you can take with you. So if that does apply to you, please make sure that you stop them. Sherry and John are in the back, and they can make sure that they grab it for you. Uh, it's just a little gift to let you know that we're thinking about you as you uh, remember uh, your loved one. Uh, Laura. Good morning, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Laura Tyrone, and I'm um, chair of stewardship here at St. John's. Every year, Pastor and I look at some Bible verses that we want to frame the following year um, stewardship on, and we chose a verse from first book of John, chapter 3, verses 17 through 18. And it goes, How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And today I want to, first of all, thank um, all of you who have um, shown stewardship this year, um, one way of doing that was by donating to our organ fund, and I know you are very blessed to have the band sing at your church service, um, mm -hmm. but the um, organ, I was glad to hear it used today, and I have to tell you the Saturday service I think is especially grateful because they really didn't have a good form of music. And I think it adds to our church worship service, and I hope now that you've heard it, you would agree that it's it's definitely uh, an enhancement to our church service. And uh, also this weekend, being All Saints weekend, we want to remember those who have gone ahead of us and have shown stewardship through their actions and left a legacy of giving time, talent, and treasure. You know, many of the older folks who passed away were really hard workers in the church. And we want them to be an example to the generations, and we're hoping that this year we can get the generations together more. And I'm happy to see three generations right here in the front. We're hoping to get the adult Bible class and some of the older folks together with the young ones in the Sunday school, so that the young ones can learn from the uh, more mature folks. And one way we're going to be doing that is this coming Sunday, next week, Although it's past Veterans Day, we're going to be remembering Veterans Day with the Sunday school class. You know, some schools are teaching a little bit about veterans and so much. So we want to teach a service to God and country. And so we're inviting the adult, adult Bible class with the young Sunday school class. Any veterans, I know we have some veterans here today, and any and all of you who would like to attend, it will be at 10 o'clock. It will be a short service, 15 or 20 minutes. And the goal is to show.
show the young ones service to God and country. Another way we want to get the generations together is we're bringing back the Sunday School Christmas program, which we couldn't do last year because of COVID, and we want to tell the true meaning of Christmas to the young children, the story of Jesus. And we're going to have a cast of characters that will include grandparents, parents, and children to again get the generations together. Uh, we're looking for a few folks to play parents, if anyone's interested, they can see me afterwards. And we're hoping during the church year to get the generations together so that the young ones can learn by example of the other ones. The Sunday School Christmas uh, program will be at this service on Sunday the 19th, so there won't be your regular service, it'll be the Christmas program, um, and that's of course at 11.15. And our hope for this year is again to make our church stronger by showing the example of those who have gone ahead to the younger ones, to get the generations working together, because that's how our church will grow, is by working together as families. And hopefully you will have received a flyer over the week. Next week is uh, Consecration Sunday, when we remember stewardship, and also a pledge card. If you could just take the time to think of how you can be a steward here at St. John's, whether it's giving of your time, talent, or treasure, we would appreciate it. Um, also, I believe the envelopes for next year will be out in the fellowship area next Sunday. So thank you all. Thanks, Laura. So just two things popped in my head um, that I, I need to take care of. Uh, one, it would be a huge injustice for me not to say thanks to Anna uh, for last week. Uh, we had uh, that fall festival last week, and it was, it was awesome. Um, first kind of thing back, really, uh, since COVID. And uh, what did you say? There's like 50, 50 or so people. They gave the help, which they were great. Yeah, 52, 52 people were here. Yes. Kids, 52 kids were here, and that's uh, that's a first, man, and it was just great to see. So a lot of hard work goes into it, a lot of prayer. I know we were, Ooh, what's, <laughs> what's going to happen with the weather and all that stuff, but it, it came together, and that was that was remarkable. So thanks for all your hard work, and, and to the youth, too. The other thing that I don't want to forget... Um, we uh, next week we will be uh, observing Veterans Day in the in the service, and that is going to be the day that we do the honor roll uh, of those who served from our congregation uh, in the the military. So I'm not sure if who just just show me by hands if you're okay and you're comfortable with it. Served in the military. I want to make sure that your names are on that list. Okay, I got to get you on there because I don't think you're on there, Sid. So. Um, I'll make sure. So that's that's it for here? Okay. All right. I just got to make sure I get you on there. So I want to make sure I covered that. So, okay. All right. I think that's it. Have a blessed week, everyone. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.